Well, it looks like Ten Hag's forward options have been named. The priorities Hurricane and Mo5 all six have been really lined up, if at all they are priced out of the move. Welcome to United Matters channel. How are you guys? And where are you watching us from? Marcus Rashford has gone ahead and really reacted very, very angrily to a tweet that was put out, a story that was put out by a reporter known as Cross Daily something, Cross Star Daily, that he wants £50,000 a week to stay at Manchester United. Marcus Rashford has been so much bitter onto the statements made or issued by, 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 that, by that journalist. And he went ahead and replied him onto his tweet and told him that you are lying. I'm focused on to winning trophies for Manchester United. Shows you how hard hurt how hard it hit Marcus Rashford because yesterday very many stories were put out concerning Marcus Rashford's future and why he doesn't want to renew his contract. He never reacted, you get? But this time around, on this, he has gone ahead to react via Instagram and via Twitter. Then, talking about, is it Scott McTominay a little bit? Let's talk about Scott McTominay and why Newcastle really need him and the condition set by Newcastle to sign Scott McTominay. Having scored three goals in two games in the international friendlies, looks like Scott McTominay is now a hot cake for teams like Newcastle. So welcome to this channel, guys. Good evening. Where are you watching us from? And let's set this rolling now. Let's start with Samuel Lucas, United correspondent for the Manchester Evening News. He has gone ahead and really put out this article that <clears throat> Manchester United are keeping tabs on Frank Frankfurt, Frankfurt's Ro Randall, Kolomuani, and Atalanta's Rasmus Hojland should they be priced out of the move for Harry Kane. Victor Oshman remains of interest to Manchester United. Well, Ten Hag is also an admirer of Goncalo Ramos and Muhammad Kudus. Now, if the story is all about pricing United out of the move, that means every player in the region of a charge of hurricane is going to be really gotten out i'm sorry guys this is the fact i have to come out and retell you the truth because the story started with kolo muani and rasmus hojland you get so <clears throat> hurricane's price is like a hundred million pounds plus you get united are willing to just offer 80 million pounds now if United is willing to offer only 80 million pounds, how many players have been mentioned that are in that region of money? 80 million pounds, that is 100 million euros, approximately 100 million euros. Now, let's try to really go through this. One, Victor Oshman, his cost is 100 or is, is 30 million pounds more than that of Harry Kane. Is he still on the list? That means to me he's out of reach of Manchester United. And however much Ten Hag likes him, he's not going to really go ahead and really and really get him because of the 133 million pounds. Then we go to to Goncalo Ramos. Goncalo Ramos's buyout clause is 120 million euros. That is 108 million pounds. Now, if United cannot pay 100 million euros for Harry Kane, yet Harry Kane is there, priority signing. That means even Goncalo Ramos is off this. It's off this. You get? I'm giving you the narrative as as compared to being priced out of the move by Harry Kane. Harry Kane's standard price is, eight, is 100 million pounds. United are willing to pay 80 million pounds. Now, let's go to another player. Randall Kowal Mwani. You get <clears throat> it's said that they want to get close to a hundred million euros. A hundred million euros is in that bracket of 80 million pounds. I think that one stays on the list. Rasmus Hojeland, his buyout, his price is now at 30 million pounds, but I believe his price can reach close to 50 million pounds. You get 50 million pounds. So I believe <clears throat> on that list, we can add on. Benjamin Shesko and Vlahovic because they are into that region of 80 million pounds. Meaning that the budget of Manchester United to sign a centre forward this season is north of 80 million pounds. Beyond that, they are not going to stretch any further. They'll go in and look in for other options. And I believe, to me, I find it sensible. And I've already said this on several occasions that 
let's go in for a young striker who is in a region of 80 million pounds because that should be our reach for a striker when you look at Rasmus Hojland, very good striker, scored five in his first two games for Denmark. <clears throat> Bring him to Manchester United will be very easy. Why? He's a supporter of Manchester United. He said it in January this year that I support Manchester United and I would love to be playing at Manchester United. If Ferguson was here and he has a player like Rasmus Hojland with the talent he's having and the goals he's scoring in, he would have said to the board, get me that lad. He would be on the next plane to go meet him, meet his representatives, and bring him to Manchester United. Randall Kolmwani is one of those players that <clears throat> loves PSG. You get? And uh, he might find himself in a position of maybe agreeing a deal to Manchester United, but I think to me, <clears throat> Rasmus Hodgland is a more suitable option to Manchester United than Kolmwani. The same applies to Benjamin Sheshko and Vlahovic. Why? Benjamin Sheshko, to me, I just like him. I don't know whether I'm just obsessed with him, but I love him. But when I looked at Rasmus Hojland, I believe Rasmus Hojland has really taken a little bit of a step ahead of Kolomuani. I remember Kolomuani played at the World Cup, did what? But look at the talent. Look at how he expresses himself with the ball, how he plays with his back to goal. He's really magnificent. He's really magnificent and he has a swift left foot. You know, when did we last have a left footed strike at Manchester United? I think it was <coughs> Lukaku. Lukaku was, was, was a mechanic. Was a mechanic. You get, he was not a natural. <coughs> Robin Van Persie was the natural that we had at Manchester United. And uh, Louis Saha also was good. He was left footed. Who else? Those are the only two that we had that were really class. Now, Hojland shows you how good he is with his left foot. And he can also use his right foot to shoot. You get? That is his weaker foot. So to me, I believe those options are really in there for you. Now, it will depend on Tottenham Hotspur whether they're going to accept the £80 million pounds offered by Manchester United or not. That's it. But it's so much interesting that we are, we are reaching that level of knowing that we should go in for a striker who is not expensive. I know people like Oshiman, but let me tell you guys, I like Hojland. That's it. Trust me, you get Hojland. You put him into that Napoli team, he will tear it up. He will tear the, the nets of his opponents up. So my mind tells me that Hojland should be the realistic person, should go ahead and get reason. He's cheap. At 40, 50 million pounds, we can get him and we can save more money to get in other players. That's it. Because this season is all about getting the manager some bit of quality <clears throat> into the squad and having backups in every position that you're lacking quality, like the right side of the central defense, Central defensive midfield, that's the Casemiro back up and a center forward. We get in those three for starters. If money arises from the sales of other players, then we can find ourselves in a situation of really getting in more players. But let's first get this done and dusted and get in Rasmus Hojland. Let's wait and see. But I'm happy about Rasmus Hojland because for the very first time, a United correspondent has come out and really hinted about him. So Hojland, I'm happy for that. But it looks like for Victor Oshman, he might be going to a team like Chelsea, Why Chelsea will be willing to really stretch the strings of their passes to really pay for that amount of money. Now, after that, let's talk about Marcus Rashford. Today, Cross Daily Stars put out a story that Rashford is demanding for £500,000 a week to put pen to paper. Rashford never allowed that to spread like a wildfire. He went to his Instagram and he went to his Instagram and said, "Another nun, another nun story flying around about my advisors and me making demands. It's complete nonsense. My aim and the club's aim are to finish as high as possible in the league and try and win a cup or two. Hashtag focused. So Rashford has watered down that story that." cross daily star put out and it never ended there what rashford did was this he even went on to the post that cross daily star put up and he really said the following that just before this one starts to do the rounds it's complete nonsense the club the club and make self have been respectful to one another and that's how it will remain my focus is purely on finishing as well as is is purely is purely on finishing as well as possible 
in the league and winning trophies for Manchester United. That is Marcus Rashford for you now. He has gone ahead to really go ahead to, to go bad, to go hard on Jeremy. That is Jeremy Cross of the Daily Star, putting out a story that has not has not been called for. And to me, and to me, it looks like we are really at a level that now everything that Rashford doesn't really reply, it's right. Not so. <clears throat> that means. He was offered a 400,000 a pound deal by PSG. He never came to reply to it. That means they are in, there is a gulf in negotiation on the amount of money he should be earning monthly, sorry, weekly at Manchester United. That's right, because yesterday, lots of stories made rounds about Marcus Rashford wanting to leave, sorry, not willing. <coughs> sorry, the stage, the stage at which the negotiations of Rashford and United are, as far as his contract are concerned, are not advanced. That means that is true. But he's talking about getting everything done and dusted. And to me, I believe if it was a manufacturer, he would have left in the summer to PSG because PSG would have paid United close to <clears throat> close to 70 million pounds. And 70 million pounds, United would have found then Cody Gakpo <clears throat> at like 30 million pounds, having a balance of like 40 million pounds. They would have gone ahead to really get in another player. That's it. So to me, I think it's not all about money. I think for Rashford, it's all about the Glazers. That's why he's really taking long to really put pen to paper because he's willing to play for this club. He loves it. He wants to win for this club and they want to be the first set of players to really win what we call a Premier League and a Champions League ever since Salex Ferguson left. So to me, I think it's all about the Glazers and the takeover stuff that is not so much in the news recently. And guys, do you know that for the previous two, three days, we've not reported a story about the takeover. What's wrong? What's going around Manchester United? Please, Rain Group, give us an update because the bids are in. We want to know when you guys are really going in to call in for the third bid. So, guys, Marcus Rashford is determined to start Manchester United, but the problem is he wants to see the future of the club resolved, especially the takeover. And then he'll know the plan of the new owners and then he'll see whether Eric Ten Hag stays or not at the club of Manchester United because he's turning him into a monster. That's it. And he's back in training and obviously we expect the best out of Marcus Rashford as far as things stand in the game of Newcastle, Brighton, Sevilla, uh, Brentford and Everton. Those are our next five games that we are playing. You get? So, let's wait and see. But Rashford has gone ahead to clear the air that those people are really lying and putting out falsehoods on me. Now, one of the players that we are looking to really let out of the club is obviously Scott McTominay. And again today, Chris D. Duag. Chris Huag is a Newcastle correspondent for The Athletic, has gone ahead and really broken the story that Manchester United require great depth in midfield. <clears throat> And if Scott McTominay is available for a decent price, Eddie Hall believes he would be an astute addition. So, I think you now know that Newcastle are really interested in the guy. You know, the story broke out in the, <clears throat> the January transfer window and Eric Ten Hag would not really cash in for him. But obviously, this time around, it's United going in for players that... <clears throat> Are supposed to leave the club and one of those is Scott McTominay and as we've been told by the correspondent of Newcastle the athletic owner Chris Wake that United if they find themselves in a position of really selling Scott McTominay they will sell him and for <clears throat> Newcastle they are valuing Scott McTominay at 30 million pounds but as you know United they might call in for more they might call in for more but I think if a match is United I offload I offload him in peace and I let him go. Why? Even before we make additions to the midfield of United, he's nowhere near the starting slot into the 11 players of Eric Ten Hag. So he's not nowhere near the first team of Eric Ten Hag, apart from him going to play because you're having difficulties. Sabitz are doubtful for Newcastle game. Ericsson is out and um, Casemiro is suspended. So that means if at all those players keep fit, Scott McTominay might not find himself in a position of playing for Manchester United. So I think he wants to start games for United and he's willing to really leave. And I think we should let him go. Let him go, <clears throat> get in that million pounds and collect money from the sales as soon as possible. And then we'll find ourselves getting in quality players that Eric Ten Hag want that will suit his system. So guys, your thoughts on Eric Ten Hag's forward options? 
as late. 80 million pounds for Hurricane. If if you are priced out of the move, then we are going to go in for only Rasmus Hojland and Cole Mwani. That's it. It looks like if Hurricane move falls out or doesn't fall through, we are going to go in for those. So your thoughts on that are welcome in the comment section below. Tell me what your thoughts are about Scott McTominay to Newcastle. Newcastle willing to really buy the player if at all the price is astitute. So if the price is right, should they take him or not? Are you, do you want United to sell Scott McTominay? Yes or no in the comment section below. And lastly, Marcus Rashford coming out and, and really assuring us that he is focused on to winning things for the club of Manchester United and ending this season on a high. And this has been something that has been brought about by the journalist of the Daily Star Cross coming out and obviously alleging that Marcus Rashford wants £500,000, of which Rashford said, no, that's a lie. So, your thoughts onto that are welcome in the comment section below. I know that in this world, we are all, we are all opinion, opinionated. On different on different on different views so guys i want to see your opinions onto that so thank you for watching it through rock and david is my name don't forget to subscribe to this channel i sign out for now see you later i cover you all in the precious blood of jesus christ my muslim friends enjoy your holy month of ramadan me out for now see you in our last video of the day